So a while back, I did a video to calculate the distance that a walk would take to walk around a single block in Scrap Mechanic. Really, the entire video was just an excuse to say the phrase, how many blocks would a walk have to walk to walk around the block? Because that's fun to say, kind of like a tongue twister. If you haven't seen that video already, you should definitely go watch it first so that you know what's going on. But today we're going to be touching up on that a little bit more. One concern that some people had was the method that I used to measure the collision of a walk using a sort of wedge shape to find the smallest space that a walk could fit into. And that's not exactly the best way to do it. So one thing that we can do is to take a look at the collision model of the walk from the game files. And it looks like this. I'm not exactly sure how this collision model is used, but I can see in the game files there are two different collision models. One that's used for the walk's ragdoll effect, like when it's flopping around, which looks exactly the same as this, just slightly smaller. And this one, which seems to be for the walk's hitbox, like the area that you can hit the walk with a hammer or a spud gun. I'm not sure if this means that this is the model that's used for the walk's general collision, like when it's walking into a wall, because this is actually much smaller than what we can observe in-game. Now this doesn't exactly explain very much, but we can compare this to the walk's visual model. So here, we're comparing the size of this hitbox model to what you actually see in the game. I'm not sure which is the front and which is the back, but I don't think that even matters since we're just looking for the widest point in this model, how thick the walk is. If you consider a walk walking forward alongside a wall, so the directions are parallel, all that really matters is how wide the walk is, and the walk isn't going to get any closer to the wall if the front or the back of the collision model is thinner. The thickest point of the collision model is going to keep the walk at a certain distance. So, because we have the hitbox as a 3D model, we can actually just measure the distance between two points. And it turns out that the widest area is right around four blocks wide. So if we're going off of this measurement, then the answer from the previous video changes dramatically. In the previous video, we measured the width of the walk to be around 5.7 blocks. That's very different than what this hitbox seems to suggest, so I'm not sure if this is even the correct model. So, what's going on here? Was the measuring method in the previous video just that bad? Well, one explanation might be that there is extra padding all over this collision model when it's used in the game. This is something peculiar about the objects in Scrap Mechanic, where the collision of a part is actually larger than you think it is. Mod makers might know what I'm talking about, where if you create a custom part, you can define the collision with some vertices, just like a wedge is a wedge with six vertices. But then you can give those vertices some extra padding to help collisions perform like they're supposed to. You can use this in all kinds of different ways, and the padding can be any size. Here, you can see two wedges in the game. They look like wedges. But when we turn them over and lay them on their slanted side, we can see that one of them has a larger collision than the actual size of the visual model. And this is because of the extra padding being set differently for these parts. Long story short, the collision models in the game are usually larger than the definitions that created them, because of this extra padding. Now I'm not exactly sure how big this extra padding would be for a walk, or if this is even what's going on when we try to measure the walk size. It's pretty strange that the measurement that we had in the previous video is very different than what this hitbox model seems to suggest. And I'm starting to think that this model isn't even what's used for the walk size in-game, and that the game simply generates a sphere of collision for general use. And these other models are only for specific stuff, like the ragdoll effect for the walk. So I went ahead, back into the game, and I tried measuring the walk size all over again. Because we need the effective width of a walk to properly calculate how close a walk would be walking alongside a wall. For this test, I got a walk walking as horizontally as possible using some corn, and I slowly crushed it between two walls. Using some number logic, I was able to record the moment that a walk was crushed, and I got a measurement of 6.03 for the walk's total width. I also tried measuring the walk's width in another way, where I took an orient block to track the position of a walk to get the center of the walk, and to measure just how close that gets to the wall's surface. Again, I enticed the walk with some corn to move closer and closer to the wall, and created this area for the walk to move around in. Now this was strange because in the other test, the walk was crushed at just over six blocks. But in this test, the walk can move around just fine in an area of only six blocks. Anyway, this test was to try to get the walk as close as possible to the wall. And even with corn and wedges to help the walk move closer and closer, the walk was not able to get any closer to the wall. So the measurement for the walk's radius in this test is exactly three blocks. That's a diameter of six blocks. There are some other ways to measure a walk that I didn't end up trying, like spitting a bunch of sensors around the walk to measure its size, scanning from all different directions. Or another way to do it would be to fill up a tub with very small parts so as to completely surround the walk, 
and then using special sensors to see inside the tub and measure the void that the walk creates. I also didn't end up doing this because it just lags my game really badly. So now that we have some kind of idea of what the effective width of a walk is, we can do the math to calculate the path that a walk would take to walk around the block. It should be noted that the actual width of a walk, as defined by the game, whether it's the collision models or something else, that's not what we're focusing on here, and we're just going off of what we measured in-game. Also, the math that we're doing is based on an absolutely perfect walking path that the walk would take, and the game's physics and collisions working perfectly too, so every, you know, the stars have to align for everything to go perfectly. There's definitely some room for error, and if more people did more tests to measure a walk, then we would be able to tell exactly how big that margin of error is, so we're just going off of what was measured in this case. Now the way that I showed my calculations in the previous video was admittedly pretty bad, and I only roughly explained what was going on in Microsoft Paint. I wanted a way to show you guys how the calculation works visually, but I don't really have any animation software. So I just coded it instead, and it turns out to be much better this way since I could get calculations for any possibility. Here you can see a visual representation of a block, and the path that a walk would have to take to walk around that block. Again, we're assuming the best case scenario for the walk's walking path based on the information that we gave it. And we come out to this answer in blocks. So plugging in the walk's width that we got in the last video, the answer is the same, approximately 22 blocks distance. The new measurement of 3 blocks radius, you know, a 6 block diameter, we can see that the distance is actually greater, so now it's approximately 23 blocks. Oh boy, bit, you know, crazy big difference. Using this tool, I think it'll be easy to show why the calculation is basically the circumference of a circle, plus the length of the walls that the walk has to walk along. For example, if we consider that the walk is infinitely skinny, like a, a thickness of zero, then the distance that a walk would have to walk is simply the perimeter of the block itself, which is a length of four. Even if we change the block size, it's just the perimeter of the blocks that the walk has to walk around. Now let's say that the walk has some thickness. We're adding the circumference of a circle to that distance, according to how thick the walk is. For example, if the walk's width is 2, you can see that the sides of the block don't change length, and it's only the rounded corners that get larger. And some people were skeptical about how this works. So you can see, if we shrink the blocks down to zero, so the walk has to walk around an infinitely small point but cannot go through it, you can see the path that it takes is simply a circle based on how wide the walk actually is. There are no straight lines to walk along. As we change the size of the obstacle for the walk to walk along, you can see that those quarter circles on each corner don't change size. They are just based on the walk's physical size. Just like as if we're changing the walk size but not the blocks to walk around, we can see that the perimeter of the blocks doesn't change. So this actually gives us a formula to work with to calculate how many blocks would a walk have to walk to walk around the block. Whether it's a square or a rectangle doesn't actually matter, it's just the perimeter of the blocks to walk around plus the circumference of a circle. The size of that circle is given by the radius of the thing walking around the obstacle, like how thick the walk is. Even if there was a more complex shape, this would still just be the circumference of a circle added onto the perimeter of the outer shape, like as if you had connected all of the outer corners. Even with a shape like this, it's only adding the circumference of a single circle to the perimeter of that shape. The fact that it's the perimeter plus the circumference of a circle does not change no matter how the shape changes or the walk size changes. It's always going to be perimeter plus circumference of a circle. You're basically adding together two different perimeters. And you can sort of see how that works just by looking at the segments of a circle left behind by the path taken around the complex shape. The straight lines are exactly the same length, they're just as far as the walk is wide. And the corners are the segments that make up a single circle. Which makes sense, because if you're walking around something, you're going to be turning 360 degrees. So I hope this helps to clarify what I was even doing in the last video, and I encourage you guys to try your own methods of measuring a walk and see what sorts of numbers that you come up with. Based on what I did today, it seems like the number of blocks that a walk would have to walk to walk around the block is now approximately 23 blocks. But I think I've had enough of this tongue twister, so that's all that I've got to share with you guys for today. See you guys next time for something different. 